Hello my dear chess friends and welcome to our new video. Here I will present game Ulf Anderson played with white pieces in uh, 1983 Hugo wins Wijkanze tournament against Kronoslav Hulak, a legendary player from former Yugoslavia. Uh, what happened in the game is very remarkable and instructive use, uh, using the file and you'll see what happened. Uh, let's start now with the game, knight f3, knight f6, c4, c5, g3, favorite English setup from Ulf Anderson, g6, and now switching to double fianchetto with b3. Okay, if someone is master of uh, queenside fianchetto and master of kingside fianchetto, as I like to say, he must be master even of double fianchetto and Ulf Anderson definitely was the master. Uh, castling, castling, all that looks okay. And after d6, white played d4. Uh, c takes, knight takes, okay, black practically must take with idea not to allow d5, which is uh, forcing black to get to the, uh, go back to, to defense c takes knight takes d4 and now that looks maybe look primitive because white controls center with bishop uh didn't want directly to uh, get pawn with this uh, to get center with his pawns but definitely uh from my career and i'm king's indian player uh as black uh that setup is extremely uh annoying for black because with minimal risk uh white plays and usually gets initiative uh, why minimal risk? Because probably after knight c3 and knight jump somewhere, there can be some equal endgame uh, arising on the on the board. But even in such equal endgame, there are chances for white to go for initiative. Something similar will happen, and you will see. Bishop d7, normal move. Knight c3 and a6, normal move. Black wants in some moment to play b5. Who knows? Rook c1 and queen a5. All that is normal and nowadays I think more popular is to play knight c2 with using road for knight, knight e3, knight d5 to install knight on outpost on d5. But in game white played e3 and what happened? Rook f c8 that is good, uh, very old maneuver and even nowadays recognized as a good one. Removing queen to transfer a rook to c8. By this even if white sets battery with bishop on e3 and queen d2, bishop h6 would be useless. Of course, even in this position with fianchetto, white dark square bishop, that is just a good plan. Black wants to get something on a and c files after he plays b5. a3, rook b8, rook e1, and patience is trademark of Ulf, but still I don't think uh, there was so need for such move. Uh, Maybe he wanted, after black plays queen h5, bishop h3 to keep white bishop on the board, but black played bishop g4, queen d2, or that is normal, and queen h5 happened now. Uh, okay, you are on the move. How would you continue now is white? Question for you, you can pause the video, and that would be, I think, a good test for you. What to do is white here? Uh, I think the best would be knight d e2 with idea knight f4 to kick opponent queen back but i cannot say nothing against knight d5 knight d5 and after taking the point is after knight e5 there is nothing black can do with that knight because there is e4 with an edge definitely f4 can be on agenda and black can be in trouble with that pieces uh white can probably easily kick them back uh with an edge yeah uh, okay, what can black do here? Uh, he played knight takes d4, of course bishop takes, and bishop takes, and of course queen takes. Uh, it may look for neutral player that black achieved a lot. He got, uh, let's say, a promising endgame with bishops on the board, where white bishop, where white bishop is restricted by that pawn, and black has formally good bishop because his pawn is fixed on dark but as you can 
I think you can observe that position deeper and you can see practically black has problem with queen out of game. Uh, even white can maybe go for trading bishop some way, I don't know, but maybe h4, let's say king h2, bishop h3, where after uh, black queen is misplaced, white can organize something to get control over the c file. And uh, white can fight for c file even after this simply by playing rook c4. What's the point? Well, the point is white will double on the file. Black solved one problem, okay, but a problem of misplaced pieces. His queen is now back to the game. Uh, there is no bishop queen must protect, but the file is white. What can I say? If rook c4 is played, queen takes, b5, there is queen c6, and queen e5. Uh, that looks very dangerous for black, but surprisingly that would be a better option for black. Uh, if white takes on a6, black takes two pawns, that's bad. If white plays e4, there is queen b2 with counterattack, and as you can see, black would be okay. So surprisingly, black would be okay, but black decided to go for inaccurate queen f5, and now white doubled, queen d7, black hoped with retreating queen, uh, he can hold the position, okay, that should be holdable, maybe it is holdable, but generally it is good. It is not good to give white such such play. After e4 is played, there is f6 to stop white e, e5 and to make space for king. Okay, what would you do as white? There is only one open file. How would you handle your domination on that? Definitely you should try to invade, but how to invade? Would you play queen c3 or maybe Alekhin's patent, you know, queen goes behind rooks. So if you play rook c3, okay, you can go for this. All that is good, but I think direct play with queen c3 cannot be bad because simply you get the file. After taking, file is yours and king f7. Why king f7? Well, simply after rook, after queen c7 is played, black can take and King gets closer, where after that rook will be kicked back and black will have possibility to trade rooks or maybe to keep king on d7 and to play with rook somewhere else. Okay, that would be okay for black. Uh, if you dominate on the file, you should keep your pieces or invade. But final invasion should be... Uh, uh, you should go for final invasion only if you get sure your pieces will remain on uh, invasion of squares. As you can see, if queen c7, your rook cannot stay for a long time there and will be kicked back. So that's why white played h3. Idea is patiently to organize maybe attack on king side, not maybe, but for sure. And by such unpleasant patient move, you set additional pressure to your opponent. Why is important not to rush in positions opponent doesn't have any active plan? If opponent doesn't have any active plan, I suggest you, I highly recommend you to go for Soviet Union chess school advice, don't rush. I think Akiba Rubinstein was the first player who with great success in his praxis implemented that principle and that was later, later widely used in Petrosian, Karpov Praxis and especially, as you can see, Ulf Anderson. But what is the point of that principle? Well, if you go for patient play, as first, you reduce chance to make some mistake. If you advance pawn for one square and then you do some preparational move, then you advance it again, you will reduce risk to make mistake because who knows, maybe it will be bad if you immediately push it for two squares. And second, uh, maybe by playing very slowly, you will hide your intentions. So after you play h3, maybe he doesn't know your intention will be h4 or to advance other pawns. Or maybe you just want to, let's say, prevent queen g4. Uh, reason number three, maybe you will make your opponent asleep. If you follow such a rhythm of play, 
uh, you do one good one move and two slow moves and then another preparation or move and another two or three or four slow moves maybe you will make your opponent asleep what's the point uh, maybe he won't be able to react uh, properly against your plans as four and as happened in game something uh, under number four happening game maybe your opponent will get confused get scared and he will go for some uh, drastic liberation I will just uh, say not a real liberation but uh, in black's eyes that looks like liberation and uh, okay you can simply suppose and guess he played here f5 f5 okay black should play h5 to make additional spot for the king <coughs> and to fight against white advance <coughs> g4 he wanted with f5 probably to fight against g4 but he wanted also to make that pawn without protection okay white can play f3 but black can then just wait why not to activate the rook after rook c3 evidently after that pawns disappear the board there will be rook f3 with advance f4 e queen e4 and uh, now as you can see situation is changed drastically but you need to tell me or just to answer is it change in white or in black favor well answer is i'll say now definitely in white favor what's the point why in white's favor well simply white has possibility after he pushes f4 f5 and captures with some piece to use g and h pawn to create outside passer yes black can create passer in the middle of the board in the center but you know center past pawns are never dangerous almost never dangerous uh, just imagine pawn endgame where you have g passer and he has d passer and there are a and b pawns on the board easily winning for white so that's additional motive white got here other motive is play against e7 pawn and using e6 square and of course key motive is now weakened black king which is in trouble and can be attacked with white queen and rook maybe it looks an illusion but definitely black king is black additional problem rook f8 to do something on f5 but there is nothing first a4 not allowing queen b5 king g7 and here we go g4 one of key moves to get control over important f5 square black wanted to play queen f5 with additional with uh, uh, some additional activity and with getting enough of counterplay rook f6 just take a class two moves restricting the queen what a beautiful what a beautiful strategy before opponent uh, before you go for decisive measures for decisive maneuvers squeeze opponent more and more after rook f6 let's squeeze even the rook uh, rook is blocked pinned and there is even possibility queen b6 with rook c7 oh black is in danger of course white threatened g5 black wanted to prevent it and now of course I think it was better to move king back but still I think that will lead to devastation after queen b6 black try with g5 but okay now shocking move not h4 but f4 uh, whatever black does he plays h6 there is f5 cementing position there is no e6 possibility and now white has enough of play on the queen side there is no queen b6 but there is queen b4 rook f7 rook c4 that was a tricky move if you take black has compensation with e6 and he takes f5 uh, very nasty trick okay but rook c4 now very simple what does white want to do simply queen c3 check and in waiting with mate on h8 what a simple threat what a simple play king h7 moving on advance and now after queen c3 black wanted to cover a trunk but he didn't play rook f8 because of rook c7 with winning material uh threat additional threat here after rook c7 is even f6 oh yeah you see that f6 even uh black played queen g8 that's what black hoped to do but after queen g8 is played now 
rook in wait again, rook c7. b5 was played and that is the desperation, a, b, a, b, queen d3 now. Well, targeting the pawn, why not to collect the pawn if possible? And don't forget, once again, double attack, An additional threat is f6. Well, queen from c3 set uh, double attack on c5 and controlling. h8 targeting king, threatening mate and doing check when king is on g7. And now queen from d3 again goes for double attack, this time attacking pawn and attacking king same time. Black tried with king h8 to organize something, but look, take a look about, take a look on black pieces. <coughs> same time, white king looks uh, unsafe, but it is safe perfectly. Queen a8, final idea for black to go for something, but easy neutralization. Queen c4, black can do one check, but that's all. Now, if black captures, let me show you that. Okay. Endgame is just lost for black because white rook is behind and game is over. White can just push. And now, as you can see, if rook b5, white just goes with king. Taking will lead to defeat after that and activating king. On other hand, if black wants to block white, white is faster. And you see, pawn goes on. So game would be over. Black try with queen a6 somehow to infiltrate to deliver any check, but there is nothing with secure king with ultimately active pieces. It is time to advance. Uh, black rook must not go for any active play because after this, okay, uh, there is disaster. Now rook c8 with activity, but white delivers the mate. So black must wait for execution and it comes after queen e4. Queen a2 again, but now rook blocks the check. What a beautiful play by white. Queen b3 and this time b5. Offering the pawn. What happens if black captures? Queen e6. And rook is pinned. There is no defend against rook c8 with queen g6 with an easy win. Mating soon. Black try with h5. Again, desperation will try. And after queen c4, queen b1, queen e4, just white took king g7 and finally finish opus coronet as would be said by old latins f6 so the most beautiful uh, move comes at the end of the game whatever black uh, does taking with pawn or taking with rook or taking with king will be met with queen g6 and of course rook c8 with devastation what a beautiful win, but we must admit that black allowed some imprecisions. Uh, black didn't play badly in opening, everything was more or less okay, but he missed chance after all of that to organize some active play, where the moment of active play was missed here, for instance, rook c4, and after b5, yes, white has the file, white has active queen, but black queen is active now, and due to threats, Tower king or the tower dead pawns, black will have some uh, counterplay. After king g2, queen f5, okay, rook c1, queen d7, white went for, uh, of course, e4, gaining space and restricting the queen. Now white took the file. As I told you, invasion here would not be good because black will just kick rook back and play king d7 with equal endgame. Okay, white is better uh, because of gaining space and more active pieces, but black rook will be active on some file and that should be okay for black. White played h3 instead and I think wrong moment to go for active play is f5. With h5 I think black should hold, but f5 creates many many weaknesses. Reason number one, f5 is bad, now white has direct attack against opponent king, which was key factor in that position. Reason number two, pawn e7 is vulnerable and can be attacked. Pawn d5 is not as weak. And reason number three, in any endgame, white has possibility even potentially to create passed pawn using his g and h pawn after white plays f4, f5 and recaptures with a piece. So 
many reasons that is just bad rook f8 a4 king g7 g4 and now white just goes for active play g5 f4 h6 f5 of course white used tactical motives to let's say skip that f4 taken square and now after f5 black is just squeezed completely in addition threat of white is to invade and to get g6 square with a wing so what happened is white just invaded by a queen side in some moment of desperation black decided to play b5 and finally again double attack of the queen to king and to the pawn pawn is taken now all white needed to do is to restrict possible activity of black queen and finally after queen uh, attacks are refuted white had a possibility to do f6 with devastation and finally in that moment black resigned okay that was the reason that game is so instructive uh, paralyzing opponent getting control over the file you force him to take care over the file and you have possibilities to strike on left on right side white uh, took pawn on b5 let's play on queen side he wanted to invade with queen b4 and queen b6 you remember but key attack happened on the king side after black played f5 black king was in danger and white with great uh, effect and great energy used that fact black king was just weakened uh, finally decisive attack happened on the king side and that should not be strange uh, black used queen to neutralize white infiltration on c file but then after queen was removed far from the king final blow happened uh, next to black king with going for a mate i hope you uh, adopted all that principles and approaches from that game and i wish you many similar victories in your future careers take control over the file first maintain control over the file and then don't allow your opponent to fight for the file after you control file fully then you can uh, maybe combine attacks on both sides as happened in that game see you soon with new examples that will be enough for that one bye bye